Hey everyone, welcome to my October reading wrap up video. I'm Inkslaura123 and in this video I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in the month of October. So hopefully you'll enjoy watching. If you do, please click like and comment and please subscribe to my channel. That'd be awesome. And don't forget to smash that notification bell. Then you can see when I'm doing live streams and also when I've uploaded new videos. So I've got all the notes about the books uh, here on my phone. So I'm going to be reading from that. Um, I read quite a lot of books in October, which is cool. I always like getting to the end of the month and thinking, oh, I read a lot of books. It makes me happy. What can I say? Um, so, yeah, I'm going to be talking about each book. Um, I give each book like a rating out of five. So, yeah. OK, so let me just pop my glasses on. Mm -hmm. So the first book I read in October was Wild Card by Marie Lou. Um, so I absolutely loved Warcross, I thought it was amazing and I was really excited for this one but unfortunately it wasn't as good as Warcross in my opinion. Remember these are just my opinions, you know, there's no wrong or right, it's just my views, my opinions but yeah I don't know, like it still had that excitement and that adrenaline and the old characters were back which was cool, you know, but there was just something lacking for me. I don't know what it was, I just... It, yeah, but I still gave it a 4 out of 5 because it was really cool, but I don't know, it just wasn't as good as Warcross, I'm afraid. Um, but nice to see the old characters back, really exciting. I don't want to say too much about it because it's number 2. If you haven't read number 1, I don't want to like, ruin it, do you know what I mean? So the next book I read was Campfire by Sean Souls. Now, I wanted to read quite a lot of spooky books in October for Halloween and stuff, but I did find like... You know, as much as I love reading horror, it was a bit too much. So I've kind of mixed uh, horror books and non-horror books in the month of October. Uh, but Campfire was perfect Halloween read. It really was. So basically, uh, Maddie Davenport gathers around the fire with her friends and family to tell lots of scary stories. Uh, then there's this handsome young guide uh, called Caleb, and he shares the local legends and... Um, Basically, the local legends, the spooky stories start to come true, and there's lots of like secrets within the like friends and family. So, yeah, it was pretty cool actually. I did enjoy that book, it was good. Um, I gave it a four out of five. The next book I actually listened to on audiobook, so I don't really listen to that many audiobooks, but now and again, I, I just fancy the audiobook. So, um, yeah, it's The Sleeper and the Spindle by Neil Gaiman, and it was a sort of mixture of Snow White. And Sleeping Beauty um, but with like a dark twist and it sounded really cool like when I read about it and stuff but I don't know like I'm a bit confused because I don't know how to rate this book because I really enjoyed like the actual audio book of it like it was kind of acted out there were sound effects and there were voices and it was it was really exciting that part of it but the actual story itself I just I don't know I just didn't enjoy it. I just found the story a bit boring and yeah, um, but I, as I said, I did like the audio, the way they kind of acted it out, the sound effects and stuff. But the story, you know, I just, I found it a bit boring, so I can only give it a 2 out of 5. Next up is Slender Man by, and I've put question mark, question mark, because there's no author listed. There's no author listed for Slender Man, um, which made it all more kind of creepy. Uh, so I've always been kind of fascinated with the whole, like, Slender Man thing. I thought this book was going to be a horror um, but in actual fact it ended up being more like a thriller there was lots of like weird dreams happening people going missing I did like the way that um, the book was kind of uh, they were like text message format and emails and it was pretty cool I have to say it was pretty cool but I only give it a 4 out of 5 it would have been a 5 out of 5 if it would have been, been a bit more scary because um, as I said I thought it was going to be scary not so much a thriller do you know what I mean um, next book I read was uh, The Last Chance Hotel by Nikki Thornton. So this was actually voted like children's book of the month by Waterstones. I know I'm not a child, but there we go. I read kids books sometimes. Um, it's about this character called Seth. He's a kitchen boy at this remote hotel called The Last Chance Hotel. He's uh, treated very badly by staff. Like no one's nice to him at all. The only person who's nice to him is a cat um one night a band of magicians begin to arrive and participate in a secret meeting but then one of the magicians is found dead uh, so it kind of turns into like a murder mystery so imagine kind of harry potter mixed with agatha christie uh, it's pretty cool like, i did enjoy it. it was good fun um so i gave it a three and a half out of five 
Okay, the next book I read was by Grady Hendrix called Horror Store. I love the way this book looked. It actually looked like an IKEA catalogue. Um, it even had like order forms and yeah, it was pretty cool. Like a cool cover and it looked great. Unfortunately, the storage was just a bit... I don't know, a bit cringe at times. It made me kind of cringe and stuff. Like, I'm really into the paranormal and ghost hunting and stuff, and it's basically about this kind of Ikea store. Not Ikea, but very, very, very similar to Ikea. And it's haunted, and uh, some of the staff get together and do, like, a ghost hunt overnight, and it it was cool. I like the way that they would kind of talk about different, like, ghost hunting equipment, because I know about stuff like that. Um, and the characters were quite cool, but I don't know, the story was just a bit cringe-worthy at times. It got a bit silly as well, and towards the end I was like, oh, you know, I'm pleased to get this done, do you know what I mean? Which is never a good thing. Um, so I gave Horror Store a three out of five. Next book I read was also by Grandy Hendrix, and it was called We Sold Our Souls. So, I thought this book was going to be amazing. I was so mega hyper for this book, but unfortunately I was disappointed and let down. Uh, so it's kind of like a heavy metal band, dark black magic, there's curses, there's cults. It was just all a bit weird. Like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I'm not normally speechless, as you probably can tell, I'm quite gobby. But I'm speechless. It was... It was just really weird. And the odd thing is, I go on Goodreads and stuff and look up people's reviews, and it's got, like, really high reviews. Like, people seem to love it. So I'm thinking, well, what's wrong with me? Why don't I like this book? But, look, we're all different. If we all like the same stuff, it'd be boring. But I just thought it was really bizarre. Like, yeah, so I only gave it two out of five. My glasses keep slipping down my nose, and it's really annoying. Sorry. Anyway, next book I read, yay, love this one. So this was um, Dear Evan Hansen, and I forgot to write down the author, so I'm really sorry about that, but it's called Dear Evan Hansen. Um, I absolutely love this book. Um, it was basically based on a musical, which um, is supposed to be great. It's supposed to be really good music, you know, great story, and I'd love to see it. Now I've read the book, I would totally be up for like seeing that musical so when a letter that was never meant to be seen by anyone draws high school senior evan hansen into a family's grief over the loss of their son he's given the chance of a lifetime to actually belong um he just has to stick to a lie that he never meant to tell um troubled connor murphy was his secret best friend apparently <laughs> uh, so this book deals with so many things friendship anxiety sexuality grief and it's just sensational I loved it. I literally loved it. I yeah, I've got it on my bookcase downstairs where I put all my special like collecting books that I just I love so much, you know, and I never get rid of kind of books. And it's gone with that because I I thought it was absolutely amazing. Five out of five and yeah, it was brilliant. Honestly, it was amazing. Next book I read was just a little quick read that I got uh from the library. It was called Trevor and it was by James Lascent. So this, yeah, just a little quick read. I was in the library and I just saw it and I thought, well, that looks cool. So I picked it up. So this story is inspired by the charity called The Trevor Project and it's the leading national organisation providing uh, crisis intervention and suicide prevention services to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and questioning youth. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's all about feeling scared, feeling alone, feeling shunned by people, sexuality bullying you know getting harassed and it was yeah it was really thought provoking it was good i wish it would have been a bit longer i mean obviously it wasn't because it was a quick read but i think it, you know if it would have been like a longer book and you'd have got to know the character a bit more it'd been even better um but yeah i gave it a three and a half out of five next book i read i really enjoyed it was called ghost boys by Joel parker road so I actually found out about this book from Goodreads suggestions. You can go on Goodreads and you can kind of put books that are similar, you know, to whatever you're reading and what you like. So it suggested this, and thank you, Goodreads, because I really thoroughly enjoyed this book. So 12-year-old uh, Jerome is shot by a police officer who mistakes his toy gun for a real gun, so he thinks it's a real threat. Um, so then he comes back as a ghost and he observes the uh, devastation that's been unleashed on his family and community in the wake of his uh, murder. So um, he becomes a ghost and he meets other ghost boys who have also been killed and also he befriends the co uh, the daughter of the cop who kills him. So it's very thought provoking, it deals with lots of different things and it, it was really good, like it's really kind of, yeah, just really thought provoking, emotional and it was really good. So I gave that a four out of five. 
the next book I read um, kind of wanted to go back to that creepy kind of spooky story book and it was um, Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero so this is kind of like an adult Scooby-Doo best way I can describe it it even got a dog in it you know what I mean uh, so when they were kids um, there was this group of friends and they used to like investigate local mysteries and now they're adults they reunite they've all kind of changed they're all on their own kind of path in their lives um one of them's dead as well can I just say that say that as well um and it's yeah it was just really creepy cool fun it did remind me of Scooby-Doo and yeah I did enjoy it it was cool so I gave it three and a half out of five Next book I read was by Megan Miranda called Fragments of the Lost. So this was a young adult thriller. I love a good thriller. Whenever I read a thriller, I turn into like Detective Laura, like trying to work out who's done it. And yeah. Um, so if you like We Were Liars and 13 Reasons, those kind of books, check this out. Like seriously, it's a really cool book. Um, it's very twisty and turn. It keeps you guessing right to the very end. Um, so basically Jessica's boy boyfriend Caleb goes missing and he's presumed dead. His mother ask, asks her to clear out his room as a lot of things are connected to her in the room. Um, so a lot of the story is actually set in Caleb's room. So every time she picks up an item, like she remembers something and then you get to find out the memories and then it all kind of like ties in with what happened to him. And yeah, it was really cool. I like this one a lot. I gave it four and a half, four and a half out of five. So the next book I read was by Tahira Mafai. I think I've said that properly, hopefully. Um, and it was called A Very Large Expanse of Sea. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about this book, because I love this book, but the only thing I didn't like about this book was uh, the cover. I thought the cover was really boring. I thought there could have been a lot, like, I don't know, for such a hyped up book and a great, great book, I think the cover could have looked a bit better. I don't know, I just, I just thought it was a really boring cover. Anyway, that's just me um <laughs> so i'm being really fussy but anyway um see so yeah, i heard a lot of hype about this book so i thought i'd check it out because it sounded interesting the kind of book that i'm interested in so um, i'm pleased i did cause it was great so it's set in uh, 2002 a year after 9-11 um an extremely turbulent time politically but especially so for someone like shirin a 16 year old muslim girl who's tired of being stereotyped so she meets a boy called Ocean James, and he's the first person in forever who actually wants to get to know her. Um, so yeah, this is a thought-provoking story, great characters, there's a bit of romance, there's, you know, the whole kind of um, being judged about because of your religion and stuff, and it, it was very good, it was really good. The only thing, like, I wouldn't wish the ending would have kind of been a bit different. I, I'm not, I won't like, do any spoilers, but I wish the ending would have gone a different way. Um, but it was still good. I, I really did enjoy it. As I say, four out of five, really good, but the cover was just really boring. <laughs> okay. Next book, oh my god, love this book. So this was um, More Than We Can Tell, which was by Bridget Kamira, and this is Letters to the Lost, number two. So um, I love Letters to the Lost, can I just say that? That was an absolutely amazing book. Oh my god, I love that book. I read it in like a day or something, it was so good. Um, so yeah, this is, um, I love the first book. This one was just as good. So Rev Fletcher is battling the demons of his past, but with loving adoptive parents by his side, he's managed to keep them at bay until he gets a letter from his abusive father and the trauma of his childhood comes hurling back. Um, there are some triggering things in this book. So, you know, abuse and stuff, like if that kind of thing triggers you, you know, but it's dealt with and, and just wrote in such a, a wonderful way. And it's, it's very touching to read but you do learn a lot and you you feel when you read this book you feel something um, and then there's the other character who's Emma Emma Blue so she spends her time perfecting the computer game that she's built from scratch um, instead of dealing with her parents marriage which is like crumbling apart um, so yeah basically Emma and Rev meet up and there's this like really strong connection between them and the two help each other in a way they could never have imagined so like fate and destiny have brought them together it's it's a very touching book. It's really well wrote. I love her books. Five out of five. Loved it. The next one I read was uh, Language of Thorns. This was actually my TBR selection. I have the uh, TBR jar, which I keep in my bedroom. Then once a month, my lovely fiancé, Nathan, chooses me a book, puts his hand, you know, picks up a bit of paper, and that is the book that I read that month. So, um, yeah, this was his selection from the TBR jar. Um, and it's called Language of Thorns by Lee Bardigo. So it's a collection of short stories set in Grisha. Uh, so here's the thing. I normally love Lee Bardigo books. Um, 
but I was not I was not keen on this one that much some of the short because it's a, a collection of short stories right so some of the short stories are really good I love the one about the fox and it was like a mermaid one I thought was pretty cool but some of them were just I don't know like just a bit boring I just yeah I wasn't really feeling it but as I say some of the stories are really good some of them not so good love the illustrations they were beautiful really beautiful artwork in this book um yeah three out of five by the way if you carry on watching once I've done this wrap up thing this wrap up thing um I'll put the little video me and Nathan have filmed so you can see what book he's chose for uh this month's TBR jar selection okay so carry on watching for that at the end next book I read was by Nicholas Bowlin called Witchborn I love this so much like I love like books connected with witchcraft and stuff uh, so this is a real kind of witchy theme it's 1577 Queen Elizabeth I is in prison scheming Mary Queen of Scots and um, basically Alice's mother is burned at the stake for witchcraft so Alice is the main character in the book right and I loved her so Alice kills the Witchfinder and flees to London, but the chase isn't over yet, as she discovers her own dark magic. So powerful political forces are on her trail. She can't help but wonder why is she so important. Soon she finds herself deep in a secret battle between rival queens. The fate of England rested on her shoulders. So this was a kind of historical fiction with a witch vibe. Loved it. Really loved it. Yeah, five out of five. It was five out of five. It was magical. Loved it. Next book I read was Chinese Cinderella. Um, this is the true story of an unwanted daughter by Adeline Yenma. <sighs> so this book, I'd, I'd not seen on Booktube or anything. I'd not heard of it. I just remember being in Waterstones one day, looking around the bookshelves, seeing this book and thought, oh, Chinese Cinderella, that, that sounds interesting. Um, but I kind of wish I wouldn't have read it because it was so like upsetting and so distress distressing. I found it very emotionally draining like there's not many books that make me feel drained like it was like oh like, every page I turned it felt like something bad would happen again now obviously this is a true story story of this lady's life so you know it it was just it was touching and I know you need to read things like this sometimes to make you feel to make you think but it was just like oh it's so depressing everything this lady went through and she was younger was just so like Oh, I don't know. It's just, yeah. So it's basically a riveting memoir of a girl's painful coming of age story in a wealthy Chinese family during the 40s. But yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, obviously she ended up fine in the end. Everything was good. and But yeah, this is like the story of when she was growing up and how cruelly she was treated and bullied. And oh, it just, yeah, it really drained me. I was so pleased when I'd read that, honestly. But it was well wrote. It's just really depressing. Anyway, I gave it a three out of five. And the last book I read of the month... Okay, uh, was odd one out by the amazing Nick Stone. So I love Nick Stone. She's such a great author. I follow her on Twitter and whenever she like tweets me, I'm like, oh, thank girl. Uh, so she wrote the book Dear Martin, which I absolutely thought was brilliant. Um, just amazing, amazing book, Dear Martin. So um, this is cool because it was like one story, but told in three parts. So um, like each from the three main characters' viewpoints. So there's Courtney Coop. He was my favourite character. I loved him. Um, and yeah, basically, friendship, sexuality, love triangle. It's just brilliant. So I'm reading my own notes. <laughs> um, Coop. So Coop loves his best friend, but his best friend is gay. And um, yeah, the girl, like his best friend, falls for the new girl in town. But the new girl in town ends up falling for both the girl and Coop. So it's like a weird like friendship, love triangle and... Yeah, sexuality and love triangle, friendships, and all that. Uh, it was really good. Like, it was really cool. And I like the fact that the book was in, like, three different viewpoints. I found it interesting. But Coop was my favourite. You know, as much as it was cool being in different viewpoints, I wish there'd have been, like, the whole book about Coop and Coop's view. And, you know, because I think he was the best character in it. But anyway, so, no, I really loved it. Five out of five. It was good. And uh, now you want to know my book of the month. So, um, I've got... A joint book of the month okay so uh, first of all it was witchborn because i really thought that was something else so like, i thought it was brilliant um and the other one was more than we can tell by bridget camera so odd one out obviously i also gave a good score to but if i had to choose a book of the month um it would be joint for those two Whew, okay <laughs> okay so now i'm going to uh, quickly show you the book that i'm currently reading which is this one and it's called sadie and it's by courtney summers 
Um, so much hype around this book at the moment, like seriously. I first heard about this book on Kit Kats Can Read's channel. Hey, Katie, if you're watching. Um, she said about this, and I thought, oh, that sounds good. And um, then I started to see it on lots of other uh, booktubers and stuff and reviews online. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to get it. So I've got this on eBay and it turned up and yeah i'm currently reading it it seems to be very very good so far i'm currently on page 42 and yeah it's a young adult thriller i think it's a young adult i think it is well it's definitely a thriller anyway and um if she dies she takes the truth with her so it's about this character called sadie her sister has been murdered and she kind of goes on the uh, the hunt to find out what happened to her who, who a murderer was but at the same time that's happening there's also like this guy who's doing like a, a radio podcast about the case of the sisters so like partly part of the book is like the podcast which is pretty cool to read in that format and then you've got like sadie's story like what's going on with her as, as she's trying to like find out what happened to her sister and uh, you know people like that like who are involved in the murder and stuff and yeah i'm really enjoying it i have to say it's really good apparently the audio of this is supposed to be really amazing um but uh, yeah i'm gonna read the book so yeah courtney summer's sadie check it out check it out <laughs> Anyway, so carry on watching for my uh, TBR jar selection. Once again, a huge thank you to my lovely fiancé for uh, picking me. I know what the book is already, but obviously you're going to know in a minute because you're going to carry on watching, hopefully. Um, but yeah, that is good. Oh, I've got a really itchy arm. I think I've been bit, probably like a gnat bite or something. Oh, oh, sorry. They, they say you shouldn't scratch your itch, but... I had to scratch. Anyway, so carry on watching for the uh, TBR chart selection. It's a good one. It's a good one. And as I say, uh, please subscribe to my channel, comment, like, all that kind of stuff. Uh, all the links to my social media down below. So come follow me and add me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and Goodreads. Also, don't forget, I do have another YouTube channel, which is called Minx Laura 123 ASMR. On that channel, I make videos to help people like myself, with anxiety, insomnia, depression, that kind of thing. So please go and check out Minx Laura, one, two, three, ASMR. Okay. Right, everyone, carry on watching. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, everybody, so now it's time for the TBR jar selection. Nathan is here to choose me a book from my jar. Look at that lovely decorated That's beautiful. jar. <laughs> right, pick me a book, please, so babe. Let's rummage in your pile. Lovely. So this is going to be a book that I'm going to read in the month of November. Here we go. Okay, what is it going to be? What's it going to be? Carry on, Rainbow, Rowell, Bedroom. Oh, yeah. Carry on. Hold on. This in, is in the bedroom, I think, isn't it? Yeah. This is bedroom, yeah. This is in this bedroom, not in the spare bedroom. No. Carry on by Rainbow Rowell. Oh, actually, mm. that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. Hold on one second. I'll go and look for it. So here it is, Carry On. I like that cover, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm really excited about this one, actually. I've had this for a little while, and um, obviously I've not read it yet. So well done, babe. You've chose me as ever. You always choose, like, really good books in my TBR jar selection. Thank you. Okay, so this is the book, well, one of many, that I'll be reading in the month of November. Cool. 